So let me go ahead and just start the recording. Good. And so this, this morning's webinar is really meant to give you an overview of, uh, of the upcoming meeting. It will be a relatively short presentation, about 20, 25 minutes or so. And we'll have plenty of time for any questions and answers that, that come up. We also have plans to, to ask you a little bit about your expectations and so on. So hopefully it will be a nice um, interactive session as well. Um, let me hand over and introduce my colleague Nicole, Nicole Wu, who will be running us through today's presentation. Nicole, over to you. Hi everyone, this is Nicole and thank you so much for taking the time to join us for today's webinar. Um, so first of all, Um, so I want to say that today's webinar is just an info session to get your, you familiar with the, the, the concept of scaling and also the tool that we'll be using for the in-person workshop. So basically the workshop will be three days in sometime in February or early March this year. So we are currently trying to fix in the date and um, Hopefully we will send out Doodle today and to, to try to find a date for us to meet physically. And the first two days will be for the scaling scan assessment, which is a collective assessment done by all of us, hopefully. And the next one day will be the scaling, will be for the scaling team to reflect in summary from the scaling scan assessment findings. So the goal of the scaling workshop is to assess the interventions towards achieving a sustainable system change in the Tanzania dairy value chain, including develop realistic scaling ambitions and also identify the key challenges and potential solutions to deal with the challenges and also to identify potential partners this will be a foundation for developing the scaling strategy for Tanzania Dairy Value Chain. So for the webinar today, as Ido and I briefly mentioned just now, I, I will introduce all of you for the concept of scaling and also the CRP approach that we'll be using to assess the potential scalability of the innovations. So we want you to understand multiple dimensions of scaling and also the significant role of non-technical factors in, with the scaling mindset in the project planning. And also, um, I want you guys to be familiar with the scaling scan tool that we'll be using during the in-person workshop and to understand where we are. So um, now I want to ask you to it would be really helpful if you can briefly introduce yourself, like your name, organization, or company, role, and any previous work related to scaling, and a little bit about your expectation on the scaling things. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Maybe to help facilitate it, let me facilitate that because I see the list of participants and I suggest we do it in alphabetical order. So the first one would be Pascal, who is showing up as 50750. Pascal, whenever you're ready, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, quickly introduce yourself. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes, I'm Pascal Tequi. I work for SNV and the dairy project that is supporting women and the youth to create employment and uh, improve income. The project is implemented in two districts of uh, Kilimanjaro region, Sai and the, and the Sia districts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
I suppose the next person is the person who has admin as, as their name. Please go ahead, admin, whoever you are. Okay, I'm not sure who admin is, so let us maybe um, park that and you can flag your hand and, and come back to us later. I think the next person on the list would be A. Jeremiah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is uh, Adolf Jeremiah, uh, a field coordinator from Tanzania, working for Mazio Zaidi project. Okay, thank you. Um, the next person we have uh, in the list is Alice Nehu. Alice? Good morning, everyone. This is um, Alice Njeho. I'm working with the CRP Livestock um, in the Program Management Unit. Okay, thank you. Um, and the next person um, on the list is Amos. Amos, please go ahead. My name is Amos Ovore. I sent out the invitations to you and um, I look forward to um, uh, hearing uh, the, uh, pre this presentation and uh, any feedback. Okay, thank you. Um, next on the list is Edwin. Edwin, please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. My name is um, Edwin Kangeda. Um, I'm a digital extension and scaling specialist uh, with Impact at Scale. And I think my expectation um, um, around this work is, is to see what role uh, some of the digital work that we do uh, can play in, in, in scaling um, research outputs or achieving the scaling objectives. Thank you. Okay, thanks Edwin. The next person on the list is Ernest. Ernest, please go ahead and mute yourself. Yes, hi everyone. Hi. Yeah, so my name is Ernest and I'm from AgriProfocus. We're actually a network organization as in Arusha and we are, let's say, focusing this year is many are around two areas one of them being dairy we have uh, quite a lot of experience on dairy <clears throat> and then we have been engaged of course by Erie for a number of uh, events and now we are expecting to to be more proactive to see how best we can you know uh, spread knowledge our knowledge especially Dutch knowledge to different key stakeholders in in the sector and probably our main also interest is also to see that uh, there is a you know, increase in consumption of milk, processed milk in Tanzania. Well, Sorry, I just joined a, bit, a little bit late. No, no, that's a great introduction. Thank you very much, Ernest. Yeah. Thanks very much. And let us continue yes. with the next person on our list of introductions, which is uh, Florence Mutua. Florence, please unmute yourself. Hi, hello, good morning. Um, my name is Florence Mucho. I work with IRI based at the uh, Dar es Salaam office. I don't know much about scaling and that's why I've joined this meeting to get to learn more. Thank you. Good, thank you Florence. And the next person on our list is Henry, Kiara, Henry. Good morning. I, my name is Henry Kiara. I, um, 
I am I work in Eure based in Nairobi. I lead the animal health component, and we've made some efforts at scaling uh, technology, particularly one one vaccine. And I'm hoping we will learn more how to. We were not very successful previously, so I'm hoping uh, with new innovation we might be better uh, prepared this time around. Thank you. Good. Thank you for that, Henry. Well noted. Um, the next person on the list is uh, appearing as Ima, maybe it's short for Immaculate. Um, please unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Immaculate Omondi. So you're right, Ima is the short for Immaculate. I'm an agricultural economist. I'm supporting Iris Maziwazaidi uh, project. So thanks. Sure, thanks Immaculate for the introduction. Our next, uh, our next participant has listed or is listed as uh, iPhone. And so if you know who you are, iPhone, please uh, unmute and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, my name is Mary Mkonyi. I work for Solidaridad as a country manager based in Arusha. Wonderful. Uh, something on your work related to scaling or your um, expectations? Um, expectation about the program or about the call? Okay, maybe not. So let us continue. The next person on the list is uh, Jane Poole. Jane? Hi, hi. Um, I'm Jane Poole. I work with Alice supporting the Livestock CRP Country Project, including Tanzania on design and monitoring and evaluation. So I'm I'm interested to see what what sort of learning and contributions the the scaling assessing scaling can contribute to that. Sure, thank you for that, Jane. Um, next on the list is L R Kurvijila. Please unmute yourself. Okay, LR, you may be having difficulties to unmute, so let's uh, come back to you um, a little bit later to see if you are able to um, join and introduce. And let's move to the next person on the list, which is Steve K. Steve? Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve. Um, I work for Dalberg as a partner and a co-director for our Tanzanian office. For those who probably don't know Dalberg, we are a global management consulting firm and we also implement quite a number of projects. Um, from a Tanzanian perspective, we're doing quite a lot of work with the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, uh, supporting the private sector desk um, and looking at a probably long-term engagement with them. Um, we've also done a bit of work around the dairy uh, sector and recently completed a study with the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, with the Dairy Board and the National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, my interest from this call is basically also to learn about scaling and just to understand what what this dimension of scaling looks like, because there could be multiple dimensions of scaling, but we'd love to understand uh, scaling from this viewpoint and lens. Great. Thank you, Steve. Lovely to have you on, on with us. Um, let us move to the next person on, on our list. We're coming to the towards the tail end here, so just another minute or two. Um, Todd Cray, Todd, please unmute yourself. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Todd Crane. I'm a researcher at ILRI, I'm particularly interested in the kind of mechanisms of inclusivity and access in uh, scaling processes. Great. Thanks, Todd. Um, the next person is Walter M. Walter, please unmute yourself. The floor is yours. Okay, so we may be having some 
um, difficulties for Walter to connect. The last person on the list doesn't seem to have their audio connected, so I hope they can hear us, but we will not be able to hear them, so I will not pass the floor to them. Let me try once more to see if L.R. Gorilla is uh, able to introduce themselves now. Okay, if not, then let us now begin. I think we have a sense of more or less who's on the who's on the call and we have a nice mix of core team members as well as people who are interested in understanding a bit more about scaling, which is great, which is exactly what, what we're for. And with that, let me hand it over back to Nicole to continue with the presentation. Hello. Hello. Yes, Walter, did you want to introduce yourself quickly? Please go ahead if so. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, I'm Walter Mangesho, working for Tanzania Livestock Research Institute, which is Tariri, based in, uh, in Tanga Center. I'm basically involved very much in uh, uh, past and forages uh, activities and uh, improving the livestock productivity, especially the dairy case of productivity. And I've been involved in various projects, uh, like American India and Tanzania project that has uh, ended up like uh, six years ago, and also the uh, moment project. I'm very much interested to understand the, uh, this, what you call the, uh, the scaling up, the dimension of scale, or what is it and how can it be. Uh, Good. So hopefully this will be this will be a useful overview for you. Thank you very much, Walter, for for that quick introduction. And with that, Nicole, uh, back over to you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for the introduction. And for the people who joined us later, um, I just want to mention again today's webinar. We just want to introduce the concept of scaling, and also introduce a little bit more about the scaling scan tool that we will be using for the in-person workshop probably happen later this month in Dar es Salaam. Okay, so to come up with a systematic way evaluating our current technological innovation in the ERE and the CRP's contact, we did a literature review on the existing framework and tools approach to see what kind of current evaluation approach they're using to see the scalability of the innovation. And we also did interviews with the tool developers and also scaling professionals um, to see their insights. So in the end, we developed a synopsis document, which is to be published in the next month, hopefully, and to show our review and evaluation of all the tools. So here is the diagram to briefly show the process that the CRP and URI will take to do the scaling assessment. We already conducted several runs of the kickoff meetings here. Um, as our next step is the in-person workshop um, to use the scaling scan and the ASAT, which means Agricultural Scalability Assessment Tool to define a scaling pathway. So um, we will have an initial scaling report after the workshop that summarize all the fundings and insights shared at the workshop. And we are going to do some data validation and follow ups. And potentially we're going to do another deep dive for detailed analysis using another tool called scaling readiness. And if there are other suitable tools, we are also open the flexibility to that. And in the end, we will develop a scaling plan to ensure our research outputs are translated into the outcomes and reach the impact at scale with appropriate partners. And also to make sure the research investments result in 
impact with improved efficiency and effectiveness in the longer term. So the scaling plan will include a clear scaling pathway for the specific and selected innovations. And also um, we will have the strategic action for the next steps. And the workshop will form the foundation and your inputs are really valuable for us to understand the current practice and the environment. So before we actually looking at the, the innovation package, we should understand the concept of what is scaling. Um, there are different definitions for scaling. It is like something happens just after piloting. And according to the CIMIT, which is also one of the developer of the um, scaling scan tool, they have three relative relevant concepts respectively. The scaling out means reaching more people with the innovation through multiplication and extension. This also includes the concept here like higher adoption rates and reach more people. And typically we are aiming at like 100,000 people and then we'll call it in the scaling stage. And it also have the concept of scaling up, which refers to transforming institutional conditions, including policies, strategic partnerships for effective, efficient scaling out. This is like a more internal process to make sure the environment is conducive for the scaling. And other concept is scaling deep, um, which means to changing minds, values, and cultural practices by a series of awareness raising activities and capacity building to make people adapt the new innovation from a deep side. It also means the long lasting impact with system changes. So um, I know most of you guys probably participated in the agribusiness forum last year in, the, in October. So we already have something to scale. The first thing from the um, Tanzania team solution is called the integrated package for piloting and this approach including included two types of packages. The first one is the enabling package and that the agribusiness working in the dairy value chain and this is going to enable them to grow and build the capacity to deliver their businesses and create the market system. The second type is core delivery packages, aimed at the group of smallholder dairy producers, but also for the individual producers to focus on their livelihood. Uh, you can see the table on the right. This is a sample of the, one of the enabling package, but you can see from the table that even it's for a sample packages, there include a lot of things. And for scaling, each package will involve a core innovation and several complementary ones. They're all important to trigger the successful scaling. Um, here I have a question. What is the most important and most prospective core innovation in the Tanzania dairy value chain to you? And if anyone comes up with ideas, please unmute yourself and just go ahead. So, so again, just to repeat, this is a part where we'd like to get um, some quick, some key, quick feedback from people um, who are involved as to what you feel are the important perspectives and innovations for dairy value chain innovations in Tanzania, just so that we can have a little bit of feedback from the participants on this point. Feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead. Um, let me go uh, by proposing, suggesting one innovation that I think uh, should be a priority. Uh, that is feeding innovations uh, to um, increase uh, productivity. 
I'm saying this because um, many uh, animals, many cows uh, do not seem to be fed so they can exploit their full genetic potential. So how do we um, ensure that uh, many farmers are, uh, are able to access the right feeding innovations um, so that uh, they can fully exploit the genetic potential of the graded um, uh, crossbred or great animals that they are on. I, I let me um, comment. My my uh, my feeling is the the approach we are proposing for um, delivering these technologies through entrepreneurs and ensuring you're combining both technical innovation with enabling environment, I think it's, it's, a, it's quite unique in that in the past, uh, we have either concentrated too much on uh, technical innovation and using well-established uh, mechanisms like government systems or, but I think this, uh, approach to try and uh, support entrepreneurs to deliver technologies, I think is, is, a, is quite unique and I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how that pans out. Because then you are assured of uh, sustainability because it's a business uh, approach and hopefully they will see the benefit and, and continue along after the, the, the project. Um, so, uh, Steve here, I can probably add to what the two speakers have mentioned. I think from my perspective, and again, on the call, um, I would think about um, thinking about the breeds that we have, at least if you think about Tanzania, how do we make our breeds more productive? So definitely the feed story, but equally, how do we go through a breed transition that actually makes sense, particularly to rural communities, and we can actually access um, services to this uh, community. And, that, and I think it's a bit of a comprehensive story there. So it's not just artificial insemination, but it's also vet services and the likes, and how we get those to the local communities. But I, I do like the idea around how do we create private sector-led models that do that. And then the other part for me is the market. So the consumer market for dairy uh, how do we actually build that? Because as we as we increase productivity from you know cows and build up a strong market that's able to consume enough of dairy produce uh, locally and at the right price. Hello. Please go ahead, Julie. Um, I tried to type in a sure. comment. I don't know if it got through. If it got through, it should be fine with me. I was looking at using livestock performance data to influence decisions on breed improvement. Um, basically, it's the, the data capture platform and tools that we're using to identify the most productive breeds within the system and then the farmers adopting the breeds. Thank you, Julie. Anyone else before we move on? Yes. Here? This is yes, not meant to be an exhaustive list, but please go ahead. Who, who is speaking? Is it Walter? Yes, uh, just want uh, to comment on the previous speaker who was, uh, I think it was Amos, who was talking on the, about uh, the feeding innovation. I was thinking of the fees and forages, uh, but you can take the approach of an innovation platform that is, uh, seem to work. Uh, very positively in terms of uh, uh, improving feeling availability to uh, livestock keepers, as well as improving the left uh, the dairy productivity. So I think that is the most uh, 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 prosperous co-innovation in the Tanzania value chain. It's, it will involve all other uh, dairy value chain uh, actors. Yeah. Uh, can, I come, can I come in uh, with a comment? 
Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Quickly, maybe please, uh, introduce uh, yourself. Maybe. Yeah, Lusa, uh, this is Lusato Kurijira from Sokoine University of Agriculture, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the issue of productivity is a multidimensional one. And one of the elements that is really um, holding back productivity on many smallholder farms is uh, the issue of breeding and reproduction. Uh, there are often too many unproductive animals within a dairy herd. Uh, and the calving intervals tend to be too too long. So you find a few a few uh, milking animals supporting the rest of the herd, and that pushes down profitability quite a lot. Uh, so I think there's a lot that we can do in improving productivity by targeting uh, breeding and the reproduction efficiency. Yeah. Right. Thank you for that. I, I suggest we stop here for now. I think we've gotten um, quite a number of um, of views and it helps us shape, uh, shape the discussion and understand where we're coming from. Of course, in the meeting, we would want to dig much deeper into this with you and have a group consensus and arrive at how we can prioritize and what we should um, look at from the scaling perspectives. But for now, let us uh, move on and let me hand it back to Nicole. Nicole, over to you. Okay, thank you for all the contributions. So um, from what I just heard, the answers cover a lot of different topics like animal health, genetics, market and community linkages, use of data and also productivity. But from the in-person workshop, we are expecting to use the scaling scan tool to review and identify the most ready core technology among, along with the package. So if we're going to prioritize for only one or two most prospective technologies, the scaling scan tool is here for our review. So as a tool for assessing the potential scalability, it has three steps. The first step is to constructing the scaling ambition. It describes what you want to scale for whom, where and how for how many for how many people like the size of the target population and who are going to lead the effort when it will happen and why we're doing this and also include the responsibility check and system check to ensure the scaling ambition that we come up with will achieve the system change and also to be responsible both socially and environmentally. The second step is to check the 10 scaling ingredients. As you can see the picture on the right, it covers 10 different ingredients that are the most important factors to contribute to a successful scaling, including the technology awareness and demand, and you can see other factors here. We will do a group assessment with these 40 questions four for each, and the result will be shown in graphs. After we did the, this assessment, we're going to identify the key strengths and challenges for the proposed scaling strategy. So here is a sample for the questions. This is for the second ingredients. Uh, you can see the four questions here. We are going to do the score for each of them, ranging from one to five. So one means that you are not certain about if this exists, and five means you're very confident about we already achieved this. So for the four scores we have here, we will get an average, and this will be the final score in this section. So in the end, we want to get the outputs include a smart scaling ambition and critical factors. Here are the example like the things we want to have for the scaling ambition in the end. And there are definitely things we try to avoid like in our previous practice. There are people mentioning about really, really specific and small numbers like nine farmers or 10 kilograms. That's the things we definitely want to avoid because that's not the scaling in the concept that we introduced before. And based on the 40 questions here, we will have an Excel sheet 
if you enter the data, it will automatically generate a graph. You can see from the graph, we can easily identify the most, the biggest three challenges are the finance, value chain, and public sector governance. But the tool itself doesn't come up with any solutions. So we're going to come up with the solutions and matching the resources and partnerships by ourselves. After the workshop, we will circulate a summary scaling scan report and me as the scaling coordinator, I will be doing the follow up with the workshop participants. Hopefully most of you guys will be there and other key stakeholders. We'll do the data validation and after we prioritize technology and innovation package, we're also going to collect information like the current business case and market linkages. And we're also going to do the stakeholder network and market analysis. So for the next step, we have the plan to do a deep dive scaling readiness assessment as I introduced in the process diagram, if the resource is permitting. And we're going to prepare a scaling plan in the end for the direct reactivity in Tanzania. So from today's webinar, I just want to get you guys prepared for the assessment and think about the enabling environment for successful scaling. And um, thank you ahead and looking forward to meet all of you guys in Tanzania. Asante sana. <laughs> thank you very much, Nicole. And so this concludes the, the short presentation part, but we will, the, the floor is open for any questions, both of clarifications, as well as other questions about the, the scaling process and, and anything related. So feel free to, to unmute yourself and, and jump in if you have any questions or comments. Well, just a general comment. Thank, um, first of all, uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Nicole, for that um, uh, very clear presentation. Um, to everyone who is participating here, um, a number of you were involved in the workshop that we had um, in Moshi that Nicole referred to. Um, the hope is that we use uh, the next workshop to which um, we will invite uh, all of you who are participating in this, in, this, in this webinar. And the hope is that we can build on what we did during the workshop then, so that as we um, intervene in various ways with our partners, you know, SNB, uh, Solidaridad, uh, other partners we may work with, various service providers, we may do so with the end in mind. And, um, um, and the end in mind is basically to scale out the various uh, technologies and innovations that uh, we, will be, um, uh, we will be piloting um, with agripreneurs. Um, and uh, hoping that the agropreneurs um, uh, deliver these profitably um, to uh, farmers to increase their incomes and productivity. Thank you. Uh, Amos, thank you for, for that uh, comment. I, um, we, during that workshop you referred to, we, at some point, we were to start uh, scouting for what the potential partners in, in as entrepreneurs are. I don't know where we are on that, and whether they will be there will be an opportunity to see the the landscape. Whether they 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 really are there, or we are we starting from scratch, or because I think that's critical to any sort of effort that's upscaling some of the technology. Well, I think the primary partners um, are those who we have been interacting with, including in the workshops to um, prepare the uh, intervention that we are thinking about. Um, to mention a few, I think, uh, and we've had recent uh, interactions uh, with them, and they are uh, in this webinar, that is Solidaridad, um, SNV, but there are several others, and uh, we're hoping as um, a next step uh, we're going to have um, some scoping to identify various um, uh, service providers, actors, and the networks in which they are involved so that we can 
uh, work with those who are most able to help us to uh, scale out the um, interventions that uh, we will be uh, testing and promoting. Okay, thank you. I take the silence to be that there are not many questions pending, but let me let me explicitly ask if there are any further um, questions that anyone wishes to ask at this stage. Uh, not a question, but to um, correct uh, a statement mentioned by uh, Nicole that um, uh, the workshop we are expecting to invite um, uh, the participants in this webinar too uh, will not be held in that. We are hoping we will hold it in the same venue um, where we held it uh, last time uh, in Moshi. Thank you very much. That's an important clarification. Thank you for that, Nemos. And indeed, um, we will follow up uh, today with a short doodle for, for options for dates um, in the next few weeks to meet. So if everyone could take the time today, when you get that, to take two minutes and quickly indicate your availability, um, that would be greatly appreciated as it would help us with the planning. And we would also share the recording of this as well as the slides that were presented today with everyone. So you can have a chance to, to go through it and digest it more and come more ready for, for the workshop that, that we'll be holding in Moshi. So if there are no further uh, questions or comments from, from everyone, um, please join me in, in thanking Nicole. And thanks to all of you to having taken the time this morning to join us. And uh, that would be all from my side. Thank you. Good. So thanks very much, everyone. And a good rest of the day to you all. And please look out for an email from Amos or, or ourselves for the date coming to your inbox soon. Thank you very much again.